Hi there, and welcome to episode 8 of the Knurling Tool Project. In this episode, we're going to be working on the lower arm and sorting out the, the holes in the lower arm and a little swivel washer on the top um, to accept the M6 thread that we're going to use. And as I said earlier, we've changed from the M8 plan to M6. A um, few other bits and bobs, a bit of fitting, all sorts of um, tiny little details that we're going to be doing in this episode just to get it towards finished off. And I think in this one, we'll just about have finished the milling that needs to be done. So for the lower arm, I basically set it up exactly the same as you saw me do on the top block. Come 20, uh, 28 mil down and I've drilled a 10 mil hole through. Now I'm thinking about tilting the block and putting a, a milling cutter down through on an appropriate angle um, to save me a bit of filing with the rod. So I'm going to do a bit of working out to see what sort of angle I'm looking at and I'll work my way from there. So I've done my working out. And I know that these two blocks, the top and bottom ones, are going to open up to about 25 degrees included angle uh, to get my maximum size. So that'll be 12 and a half a side. Now again, I worked out at 12 and a half degrees across the 20. I'm going to be looking at about 4 mil of travel, something like that. The bolt, when it swivels, is going to need to move 4 mil from its 28 centre line. However, I've already got 2 mil clearance on the 6 mil bolt. Um, because it's 6 and it's a 10 mil hole, so I, it, I, I'm halfway there already with a straight 10 mil hole. Now, I can't open the hole up anymore, so what I'm going to do is set half the angle at around sort of 6 degrees, and I'm going to put a milling cutter through from this space at 6 degrees, just to elongate the hole in the direction I want it to go. So I'll set that up and then run a milling cutter through. Of course I could have filed this out at the angle afterwards, but... Uh, I've got it canted over at 6 degrees, lined the cutter up with the hole at the top surface and I'm just going to run that cutter through which will elongate the hole at the bottom face to allow for the 12 and a half degree angle. Now I might still have to do a bit of filing but I'm certainly taking most of the donkey work out of the filing of the round hole through there. We're working our way through. Very gently. Just clearing the swarf. Three, four mil left to go. I can see the cutter at the back face. The cut's getting deeper as I go in. Hopefully I've got enough cutter sticking out. Probably three mil to go. Yes, I've got enough cutter. Thank goodness for that. Very nearly there. Once I've done this, I'll show the general idea. I'll put like a 10 mil drill in there and I can show you the angle of the 10 mil drill. Well, as they say, it, it should sit at about 6 degrees. But I've got 2 mil clearance on the diameter anyway, so that should give me around 4 mil, and that will greatly reduce the amount of filing I've got to do. OK, try and get you, give you a better of idea of what I just did. I've got a circular hole here at the front at 10 mil, and this is the bottom drawer, but as you can imagine, the rod will want to come through when it's opened up and it's 12 and a half degrees there somewhere the rod will want to come through something like that so what i've got on the underside now as you can see is an elongated hole it needs a bit of tickling and that will allow i mean that's a six mil allen key but that will allow my 25 mil uh, 12 and a half degrees easily so just a bit of tidying up of that hole and that will allow the offset that i'll be looking for Okay, I don't know whether that clarified it any, but uh, it's best I can do at the moment. So for my top pivot, I want to have a 12mm in diameter semicircle machined in the top of here, again at the 28mm back. I'm going to then make machine a piece of brass at 12mm diameter, again with a 6mm with a, a clearance hole through it, 
and I'm going to machine the brass or file it, you know, to, to its halfway point, so it's it's a semicircle of brass. I mean, it can be a little bit over a semicircle um, to fit into this pocket. So I need to machine a 12 mil, basically half a hole through here. Now I'm going to do that with a 12 mil milling cutter because again I can um, I can machine the brass to whatever diameter I like. Um, where I'm limited on milling cutters, so I'm going to use a 12 mil milling cutter. I'm going to get a piece of sacrificial steel. Um, what have we got? Something lying about, long as it's more than six mil thick. Something like that. I'm going to set it up in the chuck, uh, in the uh, vise again, and I'm going to drill and then machine a hole through there. It'll all become clear when I get it going. So my sacrificial piece of steel was a little bit thick bit of the original block and I didn't want to have a step on the back so while I had the cutter up I just machined a bit of the face away until it's like within 0.1 of my block and I know this piece of steel is 12.76 so whoop. <laughs> I'll just edge find off this back edge which is something I can get to so that's bear with me any second now closer there we go Set a zero on my DRO. So 2.5 ball. So that's 1.25 and a half inch, or the 12.7. So that's 13.95. Yes? Yes. <laughs> so back 13.95 from that touch off. And I'll lock off my uh, carriage. Let me just double check myself. 12.7 and 1.25 is 13.95. Yes. Don't want to go making a silly mistake now. Oop. Wrong way. 13.895. That's it. 13.95. So I'll just do up my cross slide lock. Don't want things jumping around. Because now in much the same procedure as you've seen me do before, I'm going to drill a 10 mil hole through, or an 11 mil hole through, and then I'm going to whack a 12 mil milling cutter right through. So yeah, just finish it off now with a 12 mil cutter, and that will leave me a 12 mil semicircle in the bottom face of the bottom jaw. I ended up going through with the uh, like an 8 mil drill, and then I put a 10 mil cutter through. Now I'm putting the 12 through, so it's just skimming a mill over the ball. So I'll finish cutting this now, bring you back, show you when I finish. So there it is with the semicircular cut. Came out quite nice actually. And obviously you can see that's the sacrificial piece there with the other half of the hole in it. So right, we need to make ourselves the semicircular brass um, swivel now, we'll call it a swivel that goes in there. I was hoping I had a piece of half inch brass I could have made the uh, the top swivel or the bottom swivel out of. Um, but I haven't got any more half inch brass so I did have some three quarter or you know it's 19 nearest damn it. So I'll just basically end up I got it in an 18 to 19 collet seems to uh, seems to work all right. Uh, set a zero and again I want to machine this back about 20 mil now I'm hoping this is a lot softer than that bronze was oh it's a di different kettle of fish altogether just give yourself about 25 mil back that'll do about a and a half a side coming off there. I'm hand feeding again, just going very gently. Let me just have a quick measure on the end of there. I think I'm getting closer, probably about 14 is it? 13, yeah. <laughs> Just set a zero on my DRO, I know we're on about 13 mil. 
I'll take another 0.25 a side after this. Have another measure. I'm looking for a diameter. Well, from experience of the last time I did it, a diameter about 12.1 mil. Plus 13. What did I say? Yeah, go 0.25 a side. I'll set my DRO to zero. Run a quick lick over that. Give it a measure. We should be approaching our 12.1. I'm going to try and do this whole thing in real time. So where are we? 12.48. We'll call it 12.5. I need to put, take 0.2 aside. So I'm going to take 0.15 aside. Just rip that off. Quite quick for that one. Take the final point two. And I'll just gently hand feed this across the diameter. That should give me a nice finish. Yes, it does. Just using the main carriage wheel for this. You do get a bit of a feel for a steady in feed. Okay, quick measure, I'm looking for 12.1 and I've got 12.07, more than happy with that. So, change over the chamfering tool. Very like the barrel nut this, very similar. So instead of having a thread inside it, it's going to have a clearance hole. You just uh, readjust that to a little more like a 45. Half of this is going to be machined away later. So there we go. Right, just swap my tool posts over. Get the muck off there. I've got a parting tool set up on the other tool post. Pretty much lives in there. Get the rubbish from underneath it, there we go. I'm going to have to eyeball the squareness of this, but I think we got it there. Again, I'm going to go 19 mil overall width, so I'll just eyeball the leading edge of the parting tool to the end. I mean, you can, you know, you can be a lot more accurate with this, but you can just uh, set yourself a rule, come back. Here we go, give myself a zero. Cutting back 19 mil. I'll just lock the carriage off. I would if I could find the spanner, there it is. <laughs> so 19 mil. Excuse me if I'm getting in shot here. Okay, that's the carriage locked off. And what are we doing? 900, 1000 RPM. Little high speed steel parting tool. I'll try and catch this one. Normally I'd hold on to it, but I'm going to just see if I can catch it. There we go. I'm going to have to change that collet now for a 12 to 13. I'll change the collar from a 12 to 13, put it back up, skim, skim this uh, face, just a light skim, put a chamfer on it, and that's the blank done for the top swivel. So yeah, we've got the 12 to 13 collar up, takes that 12.1 no problem, had to wind it right down the course, just touch that face. Again, not a critical dimension, face it off. Back up to the chamfering tool. <laughs> there it is. I wonder if I can get in there. I could have had it stuck out a bit more, but I don't like that. Very small amounts in the collar. I, I can get to it, I think. Can I? Yes. 
and a little chamfer. So that's the blank done. So I've set the, uh, the little bottom swivel up in the usual way, as you've seen me do it with all the others. I'm going to drill it through first. So that's centre drill. I've well, prepared the drills ready. <laughs> oh dear. Here we go. I got a 5.1. I'm going to drill it 6.2. I'm going to have a bit of clearance in there. Just going to be careful as I break through the far side. As you can see I've got it sticking a fair way out in the vise. I'm not going to machine it exactly in half. I'm going to machine it until I've got like an 8mm wide flat on the top. I think that'll be more than enough. 8 or 9mm. I'll, I'll, I'll see how it looks as I do it, so to speak. I mean, yeah, make it up as you go along. <laughs> Right, I'll just start this very gently because I don't think I went deep enough. Okay. That's a 6.2 hole. Plenty of clearance on the 6mm bolt. So I'm going to put the fly cutter up now and we're going to skim off the front face. Difficult to give you a good angle on this. But yeah, I'm taking it very gently. I'm just going to fly cut that down until I've got a face width of like 8mm, 9mm, something like that. So I'm not cutting it completely in half, but just enough so that the, the tightening knob, shall we say, has got a flat face to sit against. So that's one mil deep now, 1.5, 1.6. But yeah, I'm just being very careful with it. So I'll bring you back when we're done. So I just kept machining it down until it looked, till it looked right, you know? <laughs> um, when does something look right? I don't know. Yeah, when you see it, you know. And now that I've machined it, I'm just gonna put a little counter sink in there, a break edge, a deburr edge just like to do it and it's a bit tricky because you've got to be careful but this sort of counter uh, countersink the sort of single point ones hasn't got sort of nasty sharp edges other than its point itself so what I can do and I've done it many many times but obviously if you're going to do this be careful and I wouldn't do it with the uh, you know with the multifaceted uh, countersinks because they are quite sharp but I can very carefully hold it here and just deburr that back edge. I'll just try it with this. I'm not sure if I will be able to do it, but just get a good grip. As I say, if I slip, I'm not going to cut myself. I'm nearly there. I've got a couple of little burrs on the outside edge. Touch more. Sort of let it find its centre. Give it a wiggle and a jiggle. Yeah, and as you can see, it's uh, it's deburred that back edge. Okay, so obviously a bit of finishing to be done around these edges now where it's all sharp, where I've just machined it or uh, flashed it off. And I think we're very nearly at the end of the milling process for this job. We have to do a bit, little bit of fettling. I think I might have been a thour too deep with my cutout. So I've chamfered the top two edges and now it drops in. A little bit of fettling. And as you can see, it now does what I wanted to do. So, we're getting to the point where I'm going to start fitting, filing, and generally, yeah, let's call it the fitting, and polishing, and inspecting, and sizing, and all that sort of stuff. So, there won't be any machining, I wouldn't have thought, in the next episode. I don't know if this is going to be at the end of this episode or not. But I'm at the point where I'm starting to polish things up, remove all the sharp edges, put radiuses or radii on everything, you know, all these little edges and what have you, fit these to their slots. I haven't yet um, 
sized the holes for the knurling wheels. Obviously, I'm going to put some chamfers on the end of these things. But yeah, I'm getting to the fitting stage very shortly.